Somehow, it's been a full year since our first plum harvest here on our farm in Portugal, and there hasn't been a day that's gone by since that harvest without Crusoe mentioning the word plum. Remarkably, he remembers each and every tree on the farm and for the last few weeks has been wandering around looking up into the branches longingly. If we all remember back to when we were little, I'm sure we can remember how time travelled differently. How one day lasted a year and a year felt like an eternity. For Crusoe, this day couldn't have come any sooner because today we're harvesting our plums once again. Can you see the plums? Should we come back with Mum's basket and collect something? Okay. So last year, the plums ripening really crept up on us because, to be honest, we didn't really even realise we had plum trees. And all of a sudden, we had this <laughs> overwhelming amount of fruit. And we ended up with just plums, if I'm really honest, rotting in buckets and me kind of panicking. It was a hard time with Crusoe sort of learning to toddle. And I don't know, it just felt like life was very full. Not that it doesn't feel any less full right now. But um, my plan this year is to try and be on top of it. So I think today's the day that we start at least taking the first few off the branches. And I'm thinking maybe I'll just start with getting them pitted and into the freezer um, to maybe make stewed, peach, uh, stewed plums in a couple of weeks, get some ice lollies into the freezer for the boys. Just keep it simple for today <laughs> while I figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of them. Let me just go and finish putting Sora to sleep and then we'll get right on it. And in fact, there's lots of jobs to do around here today. Yeah, Daddy, so, dig it, dig it, on. dig it. Right, um, so which one do you want? Uh, uh, this one. Good job. That's that mine. I think that's from the rain. It's just a bruise. What's that? It's nice and delicious. It's special. A bit sour. A bit sour. No. Um, try this one. Well, uh, at uh, least uh, having this, help picking them won't be a problem. I mean, mommy, I tried that one. What have you got, buddy? Where? Let me see what's in here. This is our biggest strawberry ever. Hey? <laughs> Help you. Yeah. This is a big one. Look at that. Yum, yum. Is that for me? Yum, no, mine. Oh, how does Mommy it taste? taste it. Ooh. Oh, that's a really good strawberry. Our well, strawberries so far have been really watery and not very delicious at all, but that one is surely good. Good news, Crusoe. That was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what a life, huh? Eat the whole lot. Um, so, the other thing that's on the agenda today is we planted a whole bunch of raspberry bushes around this, the edge of the chicken coop. 
in the hope that they would climb up the side of the wire and make like a wall of raspberries. One of them is doing really well and we get raspberries from it every couple of days. I mean, two or three raspberries, not pun it's worth, but um, enough to make a fun little outing with Crusoe. But one of my jobs today is to move those, try and find them a sunnier spot with lots more water where they'll be a bit happier and hopefully give us a bit more fruit. But first, let's get started with these plums. friends have been at these, which is totally cool. There is plenty to go around. The good thing about picking clums is you don't have to pick very many to feel quite productive and fill a basket just about. Oh, they're so good. Mm -hmm. Those are really, really good. Especially in the morning when they're a bit cold and kind of dewy. It's such a nice way to start in the day. Called in the big guns with a bit more reach because there's a branch up there that's got some massive ones. All right, I'm gonna need some backup for that one. <clears throat> Look at all these plums on the floor, hey? Oh, well done. Where's that big one? I want the big, big one oh, right where your fork is. Yeah. Can you put that in the basket, you say? Wow, that's got to be the biggest plum I've ever seen. Isn't it? It's almost the size of a small Wow! Apple. Do you think that's when we're supposed to pick them, when they're that big? I don't know. Question what? is, do I be a good mom and give that to Crusoe or enjoy it myself? I think I'm going to enjoy it myself. Daddy. There we go, buddy. Mm. Yum, yum. Oh. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Let me try some. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yum, yum. In Finland, they would say jättilainen. What does that mean? Lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. It means it's giant. Mm. Mm, that is a good one. Push right, it, bring the basket. basket. Oh. Yeah, they're so ripe, they're literally falling off the, off the branch. Pop it down there, can you say for me? Yeah. <laughs> um, what's interesting is how quickly they ripen. Like one minute they're all green and Crusoe's coming up here and looking at them and going, not ready yet, not ready yet. And then the next minute, here we are with so many plums. It's like if I look on this tree, there must be 500 more, maybe. It's going to take some, um, some picking and there is an element of me that doesn't want to lose anything where I don't want to miss any opportunities with anything you know we get a plum harvest once a year but it would be lovely to be able to eat the plums all through the year so we want to collect as many of them as possible and share a few with the birds of course. oh thank you that gets stuck in my hair every time I walk in here you know the easiest way to do this is to shake the tree but I think we'll do that you know, when we don't want 
500 plums. Yeah. Well, next time we want 500 plums, you know, if we do it right now, we'll have so many plums, we don't know what to do with them all. That could be rather a waste as well. We don't have time today to do much with them, except for maybe pit them and then freeze a few. Gosh, they look delicious, don't they? We found some more big ones. No, I don't think they're quite ready. Okay, we'll leave them be then. Um, but the thing about that is, these are probably the ones that get the most sun. Yeah, they are. It'll be the sweetest, right? Delish. The other thing that's really interesting about the plums this year compared to last year is down in front of our outdoor furniture section, which is down over there, well, is a plum tree, and last year it was inundated with plums and Crusoe would toddle over and pick them all day long and he could reach them and he was obsessed with that tree. This year I think there's maybe four plums on that whole tree. Now I don't know if that's a cycle thing and it means that this year, you know, last year was good so this year the tree takes a rest. I don't know if it's something to do with the lack of pollinators this year, if it's something to do with the weather, but it's just really interesting to start noticing and to kind of feel I don't know, as we spend more years here, we'll start to learn what our trees do and their cycles and if those cycles do exist. So yeah, it's really interesting. Anyway, Crusoe's on the other side of the vegetable garden. So can I leave you to it for a minute, love? I'm going to just make sure Absolutely. we haven't got watermelons being pulled out the ground or something. Coming! This little person is potty trained. So we're off to the loo. Right, I think for now, that's going to be the last of them because this is about all I can handle for the moment. Get those all pitted and get them into the freezer. And it's gonna be so great because the more we can get into the freezer, the more we can pull out for things like smoothies during the year, jams, chutneys, just for the kids to eat in the summer when it's hot. It's something so yum about frozen fruit out of the freezer. So I think if we can just try and make it a thing that every day we come up here and pick a few, get a basket into the freezer, the better. Wish us luck. Anyway, next on the agenda is get those raspberries moved. And then I've got to clean out the chicken coop, or the chicken run rather. I did the coop yesterday, so clean out the chicken run. And if I've got time, get a hinge onto their egg box. But I'm definitely going to need John's help with that one, so we'll see how it goes. It'll help to get that out, bud. Yeah. That's exactly what we need. So just thinking about this, I'm wondering if we don't move the raspberries along the pathway which we've recently made with the wood chips into the chicken coop and one day hopefully have like a raspberry head as you walk into the chicken coop. Because these are really happy here. So I feel like if I move the others closer, they'll all be quite happy here. And one thing that we learnt was we planted a couple of raspberries and a blueberry on the way down to the lawn in quite an obscure location now that I think about it. And we totally forgot that they were there and we just basically never watered them and they've all died, which is very sad. So. A big lesson on just that whole kind of planning and zoning of where you plant things is really important because if you're having to run around to water a kind of obscure raspberry, you're never going to do it and you'll lose it. And that's just a shame. So this feels like a good spot for them because they'll kind of be looked after better. Anyway, enough chatting, more digging. Come on, bud, let's bring it over here. Ah! Can you hold it up? Papa, 
Called in the big guns again for a bit of brute strength. What's really good is we've had a lot of rain recently and so the ground is really nice and soft. If we were trying to do this in a couple of weeks, this is going to be like granite and almost impossible to get into. It's just good timing. Dig the hole just a little bit deeper than, uh, than we need it. Go get some compost. Stick it in there. Should we go get some compost, Crusoe? Yeah. Let's go. Can you show me the way? No way. Okie dokie. How many are we moving? Oh, Papa, the boat. Mama, mama, mama. Should we put it in this bucket? Yeah, this is the best compost. Right. Good job, my boy. Well done. I must admit, this is feeling like beautiful compost and it smells amazing. Super excited about that. We've got the other bays just kind of have gathered stuff and they're not quite breaking down yet. So yet another thing on the agenda that needs some attention. Um, but this is beautiful. How lucky are we? My love, look how beautiful this compost is. Yeah. Look at it, stick your hand in that. Okay, we're going to have the biggest raspberry in the world. <laughs> right, Crusoe, you're going to put some in the hole. Just must remember to water it. I'll go and get the other raspberry bush up. Just a bit of it. Okay, you hold it like that. Mum will push it in. Okay, perfect. That's enough. That's enough. No, no, no. Yeah, because there's more for that hole over there. Come on, this hole. No, 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 wait. We've got to put the raspberry in there first. Come on, put the compost in this hole, please. Well done, my big boy. Good job. Is it all done? Good work. How nice is it to be doing something together this morning? Yeah, it's great. I think we could put more compost in there, you know? Is it? Yeah, Should we get another bucket? bucket? Yeah, let's go and get it. Just gonna get that, and then we're gonna want a bucket of water so we can water them well in. Thank you, Doki. No wonder whatever it is that we've got growing in there wow, is enjoying that. itself. <laughs> I, know. I think we've so, got a potato, and it's um, we've got a potato. We had potatoes. I don't know what they're doing, but this is actually a pumpkin. Is it? And then those are tomatoes. Okay. Now, part of me thought I should take those out because they're taking all the nourishment from no, the compost, they're yeah, but they're going to produce food for us this year. So I thought leave them be. You're right. Um, and see what happens. I'm kind of hoping that's a butternut, but we'll see. Yeah, that would be great, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at them. Everything's going crazy over here. These yeah. compost bins need a bit of attention so that they can start breaking down too. They need. I need to turn them and what have you. But that's great. And Joao got rid of the bamboo, bamboo yesterday, yesterday, so that's great that's too. Daddy! Yeah. Daddy! Come on, let's get these raspberry bushes in. Trained to go low, low. There we go. Push it in then. That's a big one, isn't it? Okay, I've got a feeling that that is going to be a very happy raspberry bush now that we've moved it. We might yet get a yield from it this year. Well, thanks, Lev. That That's was a job great. on my agenda. Well, it's great because sometimes when you're planting, Especially when you don't really know your land as well. Let's leave that now. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, Google says it's a zucchini, but we're really hoping it's a rhubarb. Yeah. My not rhubarb. You're not rhubarb. <laughs> Have you seen the patty pans? They're huge at the moment, and we've got some great corn going on up there as well. The beans are doing fantastic. And um, what else is doing really well around the farm? The tomatoes were doing really well. We've had this, all this rain, which mm. means it probably isn't going to be very well. And the potatoes are looking particularly sad after all the rain. Absolutely. So 
What's the matter, buddy? Oh dear, do we need to find you a stick? Let's go find you a stick. But anyway, come, let's go and have a look at the patty pans quickly. Because I don't think lots of people know what patty pans are. Well, it's a like... kind of squash, everybody. Yeah. Come and have a look at this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So look at this. Peppers. Jeez. No, Pepper. they're peppers. Wow. Yeah. So we've got about six or seven peppers and then there's chilies at the end there. Tomatoes coming along a treat. Look at all of them. Sadly, that little one at the end, they got drowned, I think, this one. I so think it's gonna be okay. John it's thinks it's going to come back, out. but we'll see. Yeah. But look at them all. Amazing. And then cucumbers starting to really shoot off. We need to help them reach their climbing frame. We've Joelle's helped us put string on all of the next lot of tomatoes, so they're all ready to climb. Beans are going absolutely loopy. All the way to the top of the frame now. And lots of flowers on those. And lots of ladybirds, which has kind of helped to keep the aphids in check. Please excuse the state of the lettuces. <clears throat> we have not managed to eat all of them. And so many of them have gone to flower. But anyway, look at these patty pans. Aren't they glorious? And if you don't know what a patty pan is, let me show you. <clears throat> oh, they're a bit spiky. Where's a good one? There you go. So that little yellow thing at the base of the flower is a patty pan and it's a type of squash and there's some of my favourites. There might even be one here that's ready to pick. You want them to be between two and four inches in diameter. So this one, maybe not quite ready. Oh, but there's loads down there. How exciting. What's especially exciting about the patty pans is that I've grown those from seed. I planted those seeds out in February and they've come up and they're doing so well. And tomorrow I actually didn't really know what they were. So, um... <laughs> That's quite fun to be able to kind of, I don't know, share that a bit. And yeah, I, you know, I think there's something that the boys are going to love eating because they're interesting to look like, they look like little stars. And any chance to get um, vegetables into children is encouraging. We also have carrots. These we also planted from seed and we weren't sure if they were going to do anything because carrots are notoriously picky. But we have carrots. Not loads, but we have carrots. What an incredible little beetle. You want to hold him? Yeah. Good work, little man. <laughs> Is he so cute? <laughs> Um, Joelle's just arrived and has confirmed that that is what you call a Colorado potato beetle. And if you get a lot of them in your potatoes, well, you can say goodbye to your potatoes. So hopefully we haven't got too many of them. But isn't that funny, you know, every time I find something like this, except for um, ladybirds, <laughs> you kind of think, oh, that's such a beautiful thing. Like the, um, what was that thing we saw the other day? Um... The weevil that we saw the other day, the palm weevil, which I thought, wow, what an incredible beetle. This is an amazing creature. And then you, you know, do a bit of research and it's some kind of pest to farmers. I wonder, are all bugs pests to farmers? Are we just too harsh on the environment? I think we probably are. There should really be enough for all of us. Nature intended it that way. I just thought I'd come to check the potatoes and there's all sorts of things on them. I think these might be the larva for that beetle. Not good news. Oh dear. Look at him. A little baby, pretty stripy beetle. Look, they're making next year's beetles. Look at this, it's like a full on biology lesson. There's the eggs. Wow. We've just popped inside for a second coffee and um, a break before we start with the pitting of the plums. And I was just doing a bit of research about that potato beetle. It's quite incredible. Apparently it's one of the most prolific pests in the US that causes problems with potatoes, but also it's the, one of the most resistant pests that ever there was. It's basically evolved over the years since people have been trying to control it to become resistant to almost every single insecticide that people have tried to use against it, which is just remarkable but anyway if anybody's got any kind of home remedies or thoughts about the the potato bug 
please pop them in the comments below. I'd be so grateful. You've all been an amazing kind of source of wisdom and resource for ages. And um, I'd really appreciate it if anyone's got some hidden tricks, maybe that garlic water or something. But um, I think we've got to act fast. So picking beetles is not something I had on my agenda for the day, but I think that's what we're going to be doing. All right, my love, that's coffee. Yeah. In the bag. Yeah. I've just been doing some research about those beetles. Okay. Are uh, you up for going to pick off some beetles? I was just about to go and do something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do that. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Let's go pick some beetles. <laughs> what you guys didn't see is the face that Tara just pulled off, uh, off camera there. So I know. I gotta go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, sun cream on the boys. Yeah. Soya into into onto a blanket maybe near the yeah. potatoes. Yeah. And um, just it won't take long. 10, 15 minutes. Is it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Thanks, love. Good work, buddy. Sawyer's gonna be on his way soon. Crusoe, come on. Oh, little man, is it so frustrating? Are you desperate to get going after your brother? Hey. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> the hop in your step is very indicative of how excited you are about this particular job. Not really. Um, so, here's a question for you. Yeah. Once you've captured Crusoe's capture machine, <laughs> My capture machine, your capture machine. <laughs> Once you've captured all of these bugs, mm -hmm. uh, beetles, what are you going to do with them? We'll have to dispose of them. Okay, how are you going to do that? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? You can't just wander off and dump them on the No, no, they'll farm. just be straight back to the potatoes. Yeah. We'll have to kill them, darling. We'll have to kill them. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's going to do that? You. No. No, my yeah, we're going to put them in the bucket. Uh, you know, I don't feel like killing. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know that there's something about pesticides that, that make it quite... There's something about pesticides that makes you feel disconnected from the fact that you're having to destroy those beetles. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's just like eating meat from the supermarket. Mm. You're disconnected from the slaughtering of that animal. Mm. I mean, since we've been cooking our own eggs, Oh, the, actually the chickens have been cooking the eggs. We've just been eating them. Well, the chickens have been cooking them, but Chris is already there. He's looking for beetles in his bucket. He is. <laughs> He's a boy. Um, <laughs> but since, since that's been going on, it, eggs have been uh, taking a whole, whole new meaning for me. Um, so I, I can't explain it. Sometimes I feel like, ooh, eggs. Mm -hmm. And then other times I feel like, ooh, eggs. So I'm certainly thinking about food a little bit more. Isn't it? And we mm. don't eat meat at home. Um, we do not, eat meat sometimes when we go when to a we restaurant. Go out, yes, yeah. poor soy is desperate to crawl. Um, but it's that whole thing, isn't it, of like understanding where your food comes from and being connected to what needs to happen in order for you to eat it. Quite right. So, like with the eggs, we know that they're fertilised because we've seen Fifi doing his business. So we're eating Fifi's offspring. <laughs> Let's edit that bit out. <laughs> no, we're going to kill the bugs after we've captured the bugs, but we're I not going to use how. pesticides. No. Okay. We'll just burn them. This is a more wholesome way of doing it, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Darling, that's you're going to need a bigger box. I'm not. That's, that's what I'm... That's it. How many bugs are there? A lot. Right. We've left Sawyer on the blanket. Chilled for the moment. Let's go see how these boys are getting on. I don't, I don't see any. You're not looking hard enough, love. I am looking very... Okay, wait. Come up here. Look, here's some eggs. Go get those off. Okay. There, that's easy. <sighs> And so you should be looking under all the plants. I am looking under all the plants. Really? Yeah. I can hear Armando, he's going to walk across here and think we're absolutely barking mad. Hola, Armando. I could hear him too. Oh, he's chasing his sheep. Oh. There's a bug. Got him. Yeah, it's quite pretty, isn't it? They're beautiful. I was so excited when Crusoe and I found one this morning and then got really quickly unexcited. He has another one. Found another one. Get them, get them. I haven't got a box. I gave you the biggest box. Yeah, but... Where is it? No, okay. Come on, bug. Hang on. 
This is totally inefficient, I'm almost certain. Tomorrow, they'll all be back. Maybe it's something I'll do every single day. No. Thoughts, comments and opinions below, friends. We can't no, wait to hear not them. every single day, because I've got a decking to build. Um, and I'm quite enjoying the build process, and I'd like to do it more. Okay. So, all right, I think we've finished. What you got in there, bud? There come the lava up here. Look on this plant here. Okay. Yeah, more leaves, Chris. Leave the leaves in there, please, because they've got bugs on them that we want to get rid of. Yeah, this end has, has been hectic, hey? Yeah, it's bad. They've been busy That's up The easiest here. way to eliminate them is to squeeze them. Is it? Yeah, just give them a squish. That sounds disgusting. It is a little bit. Rather than picking, just squeeze them. Oh. Do you remember watching that documentary about those guys that bought this really arid farm somewhere in oh, America? Oh, that our big little farm or something. Yeah, and, and they basically started off and they had all of these problems. And they balanced it by looking after the ecosystem, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and then it? eventually after five years or something like that, there was this balance that returned to the environment, you know. There's Armando. Yeah. Hola, buen dia. Buen dia. It does. Now, estes grandes nunca es a mas aqueles, estes pequeninos. Sí, sí. He's saying don't squash the big ones, but you can squash the little ones. How kind! Armando's brought us a bag of beans. Yes, good because we love we, um, it. Oh, we haven't got any. Not yet. We will yeah. soon. Just squash them. Come on, twists. See, a <laughs> big problem. Yeah. Yeah. Nolly. 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 It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, oh. huh? <gasps> Look! We have a potato! Oh, oh, oh. Crusoe, it's a potato. Look! Yeah. Wow! Ah, no, no, no. Leave oh. it there, Bubby. You've got to wait for it to oh, get bigger. Oh. Isn't that cool, bud? Boom. That's it. Stomp, stomp, Boom, stomp. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Boom. Not yet. Leave it to get Why bigger. Don't you? It's no. not ready. You got it now. <laughs> but yeah, kind of interested to hear your thoughts on kind of the pesticide versus the kind of more natural hand picking. Obviously, at the moment, the problem isn't extensive for us, so the hand picking is a viable option. It wouldn't be if the problem was extensive or if we had fields and fields of potatoes. So, what is the answer? Somehow, we would hope that this farm will bring itself into balance if we look after it properly and one day it'll be a thriving ecosystem where everything is balanced and the potato beetles will exist but so will their natural predators and they'll come and keep them in check um that was a fantastic episode wasn't it yeah i had fun just beautifully so much fun peaceful walking around i hope you've enjoyed traveling with us this morning um around our farm mm. um We've, we've had great fun. So anyway, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed the episode, please remember to hit the thumbs up. It really, really helps our channel to grow. It does. Leave us a comment because we love hearing from you. There's been some interesting things talked about today. So let us know what you think. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. It's so good to feel, I don't know. Excited about this all again, isn't mm, it? Yeah. Thanks for being here, folks. We'll see you next time and sending you lots of love wherever you are. And remember, be brave. Think big. Explore. Love it. Cheers, folks.